Hey guys, Miss Allison here. Now that you have mastered the elements of plot, we are going to get deeper within that plot triangle and look at some of the things that happen within that that really make our stories come to life, that make them meaningful and purposeful to us. So today we're going to look at two different things. We're going to be looking at conflict and we're going to be looking at theme. So to start, I want to make sure that you have the right document pulled up. This is your hyperdoc for today. We're going to be looking right here at conflict and you're going to be taking some notes as I am going through this video so you're going to have to pause and maybe toggle between the two okay um, so this is the first note catcher that you should have up and then we'll pause when it's time for theme to look at the second one so let's get started when we're thinking about that idea of conflict now when we define conflict it means the op opposition of persons or forces that give rise to the dramatic action in a drama or fiction but conflict is not limited just to the things that we read it's in what we watch what we listen to, it's in really anything and everything in our life. It's things that you have experienced, you have seen your friends and your family members experience. Conflict is a part of life. So I like to think of it as anything opposing, right? Anytime that there's a clash or some opposition, that's conflict, okay? So when we go through these terms, it's going to say man. That does not necessarily mean it's like one guy from a story. It could be any character or really anything in your story that's experiencing conflict. We're gonna look at it through the lens of characters today. But that's the term that we use, but please know it's not limited just to a man in a story. It could be any of our characters. Cool. So we're going to look at the different types of conflict. And on that note catcher I just saw, I showed you guys, you're going to start with um, listing them out. So as I go, you're going to want to pause and list them out. And then on the other side of that column, you're going to find a picture or an icon that you think represents that type of conflict so it can help you remember what it means. Awesome. So we're going to start here with some physical conflicts. In our stories, we can see man versus man. And again, that doesn't mean just men. It can mean anybody in our story. Any two people that are at odds with each other, that are you know opposing, whatever you want to call it, that have some sort of friction between them, that's conflict. And you can see on your chart that I've already put a picture there to remind myself of what that means. Okay, so man versus man, very, very common. Sometimes it's a group of people versus people. But that's one type when it's person to person. Okay, second type of conflict, man versus nature. So if there is some sort of natural disaster or some force of nature working against those characters or that character, that's man versus nature. So hurricanes, um, snowstorms, right? Anything that nature is causing that person not reaching their goal or not progressing on our plot triangle, that's going to be conflict. That's called man versus nature. Okay, and then the next one, man versus machine or technology. Um, again, anything that is not from nature that could be um, holding our character or characters back is going to be man versus machine or technology. Think specifically like um, if they're in a car that's not working or we see a lot of science fiction, like the fun they had that we read, right? The robot was holding Mar Margie and Tommy up from learning. Those types of things are more based on like technology or machinery that we have. Anything, again, that's holding back our character or characters for making progress on that plot triangle, that's going to be conflict that's called um, man versus machine. So in your notes, make sure that you're pausing this as you go and getting down, first of all, what type of conflict did we list? And second of all, what picture could you find to help you with that? Okay. Other types of conflicts. We have a classical type, man versus supernatural or fate. So this has a lot to do with Greek mythology is what comes to mind for me first. It could look like other things too. Um, but when we're thinking of maybe forces of deity, right? Forces that are um, more concerned with maybe religious beliefs or fate, okay? So again, Greek mythology is like, I think one of the better examples of this. Um, if we think about stories like the Iliad or the Odyssey, man, those gods and goddesses are stopping our main characters constantly from trying to meet their goals, from making progress on the plot triangle. That's where conflict really lives. So if it's any sort of force um, that it could be considered a deity or related to fate, that's going to be man versus the supernatural. Um, we could also consider supernatural things like ghosts, right? Or maybe things that are not of our realm, not real. Um, those would also be uh, man versus supernatural, okay? All right, and then social, so we have man versus society. Now this one is a little bit more complex. It could be a combination of some of these things that we've seen up here in one kind of bigger way that our character or characters are being held back. Um, so we could also think about the constructs of society. So maybe our characters are in a place where 
Society thinks one thing, they think something very different. Um, society runs one way and they want to go very differently. I think of stories maybe like The Hunger Games, right? Um, Katniss being forced into this selection and this um, survival mode. That is kind of her society putting her in that position because she doesn't really have a choice, right? And it's going against what she wants to do. That's a conflict that I would say man versus society. So it's a bigger force, uh, maybe a combination of some of the things that we've already seen, like I said, against that character, holding them back from making progress, okay? And then finally, we have psychological things to do with your brain. This could be man versus self. This is a really popular conflict style. I am sure you have seen or read something in the past 24 hours that man versus self is involved. Um, so anytime that a character is conflicted inside, we see a lot of internal thinking. Um, we see any sort of questioning or debate or maybe they're being really hard on themselves about something. Anything that's inside their brain that is keeping them from, again, progressing, meeting their goal, whatever you want to call it, that's going to be man versus self. And I think that we see that actually within layers of a lot of these, um, but we see that one very, very frequently. The beautiful thing about conflicts is that they all kind of interweave together. So just keep that in mind as you're going. By now, you should have paused another time and added the rest of those to your chart, and then go ahead and make sure that you have that picture popped in too next door to show what would represent this or what makes you think of that type of conflict. Fantastic. Awesome, guys. So now we are going to look at the second part of your note catcher. We are still under phase one here when you guys are exploring these new topics. Here we go. So down here in your note catcher, you have three questions that you're going to answer in complete sentences at the end of this video, okay? So now that we've talked about conflict, where is that tension, right? Where are disagreements happening? We're going to now think bigger about theme. All right, so let's take a look at what we know about themes so far and think about how these two things connect, all right? So we know a couple things about theme. Theme is a central idea or ideas of a literary work. I guarantee you have talked about theme many, many times in your English classes growing up. Um, so this is something that should be familiar to you. In eighth grade, we're going to put a little bit of a twist on it, all right? So it involves both a topic and commentary. So it's not always just human wishes, but the vanity of human wishes, something like that. Um, when I'm saying topic, topic and commentary, what I mean by that is we're used to or a lot of us have done one word themes before. The theme is love. The theme is vanity, right? We're going to push it in eighth grade and really think about how does that entire plot triangle lend itself to a lesson learned, okay? And how does that theme come out of that? So we're going to take a look at that together today and think about how we can get there, all right? It could be a moral that is simply... Um, just kind of like articulating that. So moral and theme are very, very similar. Moral is more lesson learned. Theme is um, something that, again, is more of the central idea, but it could be that. Um, and it, again, it's the main idea or it's something that's demonstrated through the plot structure, okay? All right, guys, so to practice this idea of theme, we're gonna take it way, way back, like all the way back to like pre-preschool. We're gonna use a nursery rhyme, which I know feels silly, but it's a really quick and simple way to look at this. So we're gonna use Mary had a little lamb. As we read through this, please think to yourself, what themes, what central ideas can I gather from this? So we have Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, Mary went, Mary went. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. It followed her to school one day. School one day, school one day. It followed her to school one day. That was against the rules. It made the children laugh and play, laugh and play, laugh and play. It made the children laugh and play to see a lamb at school. That would be awesome if a lamb showed up at school. Okay, so think about what are kind of the central ideas and messages. Let's take a look at the plot structure for this. So it seems so simple, right? <laughs> but let's take a look. So we know exposition, Mary had a little lamb. Uh, inciting incident or kind of starting that action, the lamb always follows her. It is a stalker lamb just creeping all the time. Rising action, we know that the lamb goes to school with Mary. Now, to think about this a little bit backwards, I always like to go here first to think about what changed. So I'm gonna skip to the end here. I know at the end, the kids are laughing and playing with the lamb, yay, it's beautiful, right? What changed between her having a little lamb and all of the children laughing and playing? Well, I think it's because the teacher said it was against the rule or somebody at school said, no, you can't do that. That's a really good way to ensure laughter, right? Um, if you're telling someone what not to do, they're probably going to do it anyway. So 
that is going to be our climax or our turning point of this story. And then the kids seeing the lamb would be the falling action and then laughing and playing is the end. So conflict here, there's a couple of different things we could think about when we're thinking about conflict. Um, we could think about how this could be in a way man versus society. Mary wants her lamb to chill with her. Society says you can't bring your lamb to school, right? It could be man versus man. The teacher telling Mary that you can't have it. We got a couple different types of conflict there. Now the idea then is out of that conflict, what lessons do we learn? Well, it was against the rules, but kids laughed and played. Nobody got hurt, right? It was fine at the end. It actually turned out to be one of the best days at school, okay? So we can think about kind of what lessons we glean from that. So that's first theme. So think about what is the conflict? I like to really think about my plot diagram. Where did we start? Where did we end? My climax and my conflict are usually going to be pretty related. So how did those two things kind of come together? That's going to lead to theme, okay? And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to think about how to push our theme a little bit further. Like we talked about on the last slide, um, theme is a lot of times like one or two words. We're going to think now about how to make it deeper. Theme should be more than one word. It should be actually probably be a sentence because that's actually explaining what happened in that story. It's actually analyzing. We're looking for analysis, right? So instead of just being like, follow the rules, that's really broad. I don't understand what that means. Instead, I'm going to change that to the importance of upholding order and peace. Guys, that's like, that's like a sophisticated theme right there, right? Like, whoo, you're writing an essay on that? Whoa, big one, okay? Over a nursery rhyme, right? That's so crazy. Another time, like, we could just say, oh, the theme is loyalty. True, but like, let's push that. We're going to make it into one sentence. Being loyal must be done with purpose. The lamb is so loyal to Mary that it's just following blindly. Like, what? If, we don't know where Mary's going. We don't know what she's doing, right? If she could have brought the lamb to somewhere dangerous, don't just follow people. So be loyal with purpose. That's a deeper meaning. That's analysis. Our theme needs to be more than one word to show analysis, okay? The other one could just be fun. That's so generic. What does that mean? I have no idea what you're talking about, right? Ooh, if we bring it here, we could say levity can be beneficial in the work environment, meaning laughter made that the best day of school for children versus just like the theme is fun. I don't know what that means. I need to learn from the story and to do so, I'm going to expand my answers from one word answers. All right, friends, so that's theme. I know there was a lot in here. Make sure you're pausing this video, going back, um, emailing questions to your teacher if you have any. Please make sure you're answering those last three questions and we'll move on on our hyperdoc here. Great job, guys.